Hi everyone, this is Sarah and this video is for couples who want to structure relationships for growth, happiness and longevity. We often imagine that good relationships happen by accident and of course they don't. We work on them, we create them together. So, who is this video for? Couples about to get married or make a long-term commitment to one another. Couples who've been together some time and perhaps they feel like they've lost their spark or connection. Couples who've experienced a life change and they want to reconnect with one another. Any individual operating a repeat pattern of unhealthy relationships. Even though it's better to get somebody else to ask you these questions, you can, of course, use this video for yourself. I recommend if you are a relatively new couple that you do this process every single year because we change all the time. Either do it every year or after a big shift or do it when you feel as if there's some staleness entering the relationship. A little reminder. Really strong relationships happen in stages, and this is actually true for all relationships, whether they are friendships or romantic partnerships. The first level is safe communication, and this is where you know we have what you might call small talk, where nobody can really get an inkling of who you are based on what you say. And when we first meet somebody, we tend to engage in this level of communication because we are feeling them out, so to speak. Then we start to communicate our opinions and beliefs about either other people, things we like, whether we like art, whether we like music. We start to sort of make generalized or share generalized opinions about generic topics. The third level is where we start to share very personal opinions and beliefs about what we like and what we don't like, what we enjoy and what we don't enjoy. As it progresses and as more and more trust builds, we start to share our true feelings and our experiences and our history and we share stories and we really begin to open ourselves up to other people. The next level is freely talking about our needs and our emotions and our desires. This is really getting quite intimate and honest at this point. And then over time, this moves into true intimacy, whereby you're actually being as much of yourself as you ever are in front of another person. And then that becomes deeper over time. And Know that it always takes time, and this true intimacy level really, really grows. If you expect to reach true intimacy very quickly, then that may be a little bit unrealistic. I also want to give you a little bit of background about emotions. So, when we feel certain emotions in any situation, everything is really fear. And fear is a lack of trust and a trust that we can handle any situation. And it's a feeling of a lack of safety. Anger is a fear of being powerless. And it is often a feeling that comes from the idea that we've lost control of a situation. Sadness is a fear of loss, a fear of losing something or somebody. Hurt is a fear of rejection. It's sort of exposing who we are in one of those intimate levels of communication and imagining that somebody's going to say, yeah, I don't want you anymore. Guilt is a fear of not being enough or not being good enough or not having done the right thing or having done something wrong. And shame is really a fear of being vulnerable and being our authentic selves. Interestingly, guilt and shame sit together because um, shame can also be, I'm embarrassed of myself, I'm not good enough, I'm wrong, I'm always in the wrong. So they're sort of interchangeable and they work together. Shame can also 
keep us very separate from people and it sort of develops a feeling that we need to hide or that we can't share ourselves with people and obviously it can also link to hurt which is a fear of being rejected. Jealousy comes from poor communication or a lack of trust and a feeling of betrayal or abandonment is really interesting because actually it comes or it stems often from a fear of commitment where we often betray or abandon ourselves. So <clears throat> we move away from our, I guess you might call our moral code, and we abandon who we really are, often in the name of somebody else. This often happens when somebody loses themselves in a relationship and they sort of adopt the other person's belief system uh, fully. And what's really happened is that they've abandoned themselves because fear of commitment is always fear of commitment to self. Other things I want you to be aware of in romantic partnerships. It's always important to have an awareness of our partner's role models as they were growing up. What kind of role models did they have in their life? Did they have successful or role models with successful relationships, open relationships in terms of communication? Was trust a big factor? What have they learned unconsciously from their role models? I also want to share with you the fact that we operate so much of our behavior, and in our behavior also includes our emotional reactions based on our encoding from the past. So something from our childhood can really trigger, um, especially in romantic relationships, because what we're really doing is having a mirror of our real, real self when we're in an intimate relationship. So often it's just an automated behavior. And when you bring that into conscious awareness, and we do that by communicating openly, actually it can be resolved. And the last thing I want to mention to you regarding this slide is the fact that when we start to notice something, when something flows into our awareness about a partner, we start to build a belief system about it. And what I mean by that is we see more of it. So imagine this, you suddenly decide that you want to buy a specific car and then all of a sudden on the roads, you see so many of these cars. And it's really because you have focused your attention on that car. So your brain, the neurons in your brain and your neural connections then flow towards focusing your attention on noticing more of those cars. Are there more of those cars on the road? No, same amount as always. It's just that as we start to pay attention to a certain behavior or a certain car or a certain something, we see more of it. So once you get an idea into your head about your partner, it's really important to openly discuss it with your partner because if you are under the misinterpretation that something is true, then you could actually create a whole belief system around it and it could be nonsense. So be aware of this. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we are going to um, walk you through eliciting each other's values around relationships so that you can create a shared value set that feels exciting for both of you that you can work through together. Here we go. So, you're going to work one person at a time and you're going to question each other. Ask all the questions and follow the process and then switch roles. So one person work is the questioner to begin with, and then at the end of the process, switch roles, and the other person ask the questions. Please, please, please be prepared to listen and hear rather than making any assumption. And a really good way to train yourself to do this is just to write down precisely the words that your partner uses. Resist the urge to respond or disagree with any answer or statement because it's unhelpful in this process. And the more the person might feel judged, the less open they're going to be. So 
here we go, we're going to start asking these questions. And you're going to keep asking the same question until your partner has no further response. And you're going to be just a little bit pushy. So you can be nice about this. What is important to you about our relationship now and going forward? And you'll probably get two, three, maybe four responses. And then you keep asking, great, so what else is important to you? What else? Fantastic. What else? And then you might ask the same question in a different way, which is, what is the purpose of our relationship for you? Or perhaps, what do you get from our relationship? And please be aware that the intention behind all these questions is to get you both to a place where you are working towards shared intentions, okay? So, gently, gently, and kindly, kindly. Let's say you've asked this what's important to you question several times, and you get a list. Now, this can be a bit tricky to do. However, when you know your partner well, it's often much easier to read them. And I really want you to listen to the vocal tone of the different words and watch the breathing. Because when the breathing changes, then we are usually experiencing an emotional shift or an emotion. Let's say somebody says, oh, emotional connection, trust, prioritization, love, physical connection and inspiration. And you say, great, okay. So tell me more about emotional connection. So what you're interested in is finding out what the person is focusing on. Are they focused towards what they want? And when I say that, what I mean is, are they looking with what they want ahead of them and moving towards that? Or are they looking at what they don't want ahead of them and focusing on that? You say, okay, so what's important to you about emotional connection? You say, ah, oh, well, I really, I really like the fact that um, I feel that we, we work really well together and I feel that you appreciate my feelings. I feel that we can generally read each other's feelings and this really brings a sense of emotional connectedness for me. Are they focusing towards what they want or away from? Well, in this case, they're focusing on all the good stuff that creates that feeling of emotional connection for them. And you say, okay, great. So what's important to you about trust? And they say, well, I think what's important is being able to say what I want and speak speak freely about what I believe without being judged. Hmm, interesting. Without being judged. Okay, tell me more about that. Well, you know, if I feel judged, then, I don't know, I guess it's a bit difficult to feel safe and, and trusting in the relationship because I kind of wonder, you know, sometimes I might have a different opinion or I might feel as if I can't, I don't feel safe to tell you what I really think. Hmm. Don't feel safe to tell you what I really think. So actually, the focus here is on not safety. So this is moving away from not safety rather than towards trust. Does that make sense? Okay, prioritization. Well, what's important about prioritization? Well, you know, I just feel sometimes that we get a bit caught up with work and maybe we prioritize work or we pr prioritize, you know, the logistics of our relationship rather than what's best for us or what's best for the relationship. And sometimes we don't really, you know, prioritize spending alone time together or doing things together or learning something new together. Um, and I think maybe it's important that we do going forward. So where's the focus? Is it towards or is it away from? Well, it's away from what we don't want 
because there's a citation of current experiences, which is not prioritization. Using that as a motivation towards we should prioritize. So it's an away from. What's important to you about love? Well, you know what? I feel as if we have this loving connection, which I haven't felt before, and it's really beautiful. And I know I love you very much, and I feel like it's a critical part of our relationship going forward. Hmm, very towards lovely. Physical connection. Well, I think it's, I think what I really love is, side of any intimate physical connection or our sex life, I think what's really lovely is, you know, the kiss when we see each other at the end of the day and the fact that we can sit and snuggle on the sofa and that I feel really physically connected to you when we're out socializing and we touch each other's arms and it just feels very physically intimate and I love that. Ooh, very towards, lovely. Inspiration. Yeah, I just, I love the conversations that we have. I feel as if it's a really wonderful connection. And actually, I'm excited to have a chat with you at the end of the day. I'm excited to talk to you about any challenges that I have and talk about different ways that I've resolved them. And I'm interested in your opinion. And I get inspired when we talk about the future. And I just, I feel that our connection is inspiring. Ooh, lovely. Again, very towards. What we've got here is everything towards apart from trust and prioritization. So what does this mean? Well, be aware, <laughs> resist the urge to take it personally, because it isn't necessarily about you, because we're all working through our own stuff. So what we know is that an away from holds either a negative emotion or a limiting belief. And we can talk about these things so they are easily resolved. Okay, this is the first stage of the questioning. <clears throat> Next, we're going to go on and ask the motivation question. Can you remember the last time you felt motivated in our relationship? Yes, I can. I can remember... Uh, last time we went to a wedding and I felt really excited for um, some people that you hadn't met before to meet you. Yes, excitement and happiness. Excitement and happiness. Okay, so actually you were motivated by excitement? Yes, that's right. Now, if somebody doesn't give you a, an emotional word, you say, okay, great. So just before you felt motivated, what emotion were you feeling? And you're looking for an emotional word. Excitement and happiness. Very much towards. Lovely. And you can ask this question once or twice. Now we had, let me just go over them. We had the original list. And then we said, okay, can you remember the last time that you felt motivated in our relationship? Yes, we were going to a wedding. And I felt really happy and excited for for you to meet some people that you or some contacts of mine some friends of mine that you hadn't met before and I felt really happy and excited to meet them as a couple oh great okay so we have happiness and excitement to add to the list both of them towards last part of the questioning process if you have all of these values, so what you're going to do is you're going to repeat back the list of all the values to your partner. So you can say, okay, great. So if we have emotional connection, trust, prioritization, love, physical connection, inspiration, happiness, and excitement, is there anything that could happen that could make you leave this relationship? And you may think, oh my goodness, this is a tricky question. It's just, I think it's really important to appreciate boundaries in any relationship. So listen to what your partner says. And let's say they say, you know what? I think, I think one thing that is really challenging to deal with, and if I look at my last relationship, I think really we just... 
we just got a little bit comfortable with each other. So we lost that prioritization of the relationship. And we lost that intimacy, that trust to say exactly what we thought because we sort of got out of practice. So we know that those two values that we're away from, trust and prioritization, really are deal breaker values for this person. And we're like, okay. And you say, right, well, that being the case, even if we sort of lost connection and we didn't have that trust and we couldn't really share ourselves and perhaps we didn't prioritize the relationship, is there anything that could really cause you to choose to continue in our relationship or stay? You might say, well, yeah, you know what? If I really felt like we shared the same values, then I would be convinced that we could work on our relationship together. So at this point, you might say, great. So as long as we trust that we are working towards the same thing and we share the same values, then it would be worth working on. Notice how we're interested in the focus and how it indicates areas that we want to talk about. In terms of language, just so you know, we can identify towards often with the words, I want to, I'm considering, I desire this, we can, this sort of possibility and optimistic language. If it's away from, and we are hearing words like, oh, we must, we should, we need to, we have to, we can't do that, we ought not to do that, or we ought to do that, it suggests that there's some big sort of parent in the sky telling you how to run your relationship. And what that indicates is that there's some kind of limitation, either a negative emotion or a limiting belief. Whichever values are away from, you mark them for discussion. There's something you want to talk about there together. Next, you switch roles. And you go through exactly the same process with the other person asking the questions. And what you end up with is two lists of values. The first thing that you want to do is to talk through any away from areas. You ask questions like, well, okay, so I noticed you said this. How do you really feel about this? Or what concerns you about this? Are you worried about it in any way? Can we talk about it? How can we change that? What can I do to support you in feeling more at ease or comfortable? And how can we work on this together? Maybe we can do things differently. What would happen if we agreed to do X? So this isn't about finding a right or wrong. This is about finding mutual agreement, insight, awareness and understanding. Because both of you want the relationship to work and it's just communicating your deep needs that allow you to really understand the other person's point of view and it's really empowering as well. So once you've done this with each other, you will find it to be enlightening. You want to get to a place where both people feel that the away from values in their list can be communicated openly, which will then resolve the away froms. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a list of shared values that feel inspiring for both of you. You will probably notice, because this is common in couples, that a lot of your values are going to be the same. Even if it isn't the same word, you want to talk through your values and sort of suggest to each other where you think the shared values exist. And then you want to agree on the words for those values and then what those words mean to you in terms of actual behavior. So once you've got a list of shared values, then you have a list of values for your relationship. And all you do is you rank them in order of importance. And finally, what you're gonna do is you're going to agree on regular behaviors that work towards achieving those values and maintaining them. 
So that might be, I don't know, regular one-to-one time that allows you to communicate the different types of communication that couples have. I mean, some of the communication, let's face it, is a bit dull. It's, it's what you might call transactional. Did you pay the electricity bill? Did you get the shopping? Have you done this? And we also want to make time for that because it's also part of our planning. Then we want to also talk about alone time. You know, do we want to have space for alone time? It's perfectly normal for somebody to want to have space and to be able to have, you know, times maybe on a weekend or even during the week where they have their space to do exactly what they want to do. You may have separate interests. And that is a wonderful way for both of you to have alone time doing your interests and to feel good about that. You may also want to consider how you can introduce shared interests into your relationship. Maybe you want to learn something new together, something that allows you to spend time together, laugh together, you know, a little bit of fun competition, have that competition between you. And communication. It's really, really important to set aside time to have open communication about how you feel about things. There's a couple of really important elements to this. One of them is to discuss (laughs) behaviors that irritate you. It isn't about an attempt to change that behavior necessarily. It's communicating the frustration or the irritation and it's keeping it private. One of the things that's really wonderful about strong couples is they have this private sacred communication that's just between them. They aren't sort of bad-mouthing their partner or complaining about their partner to their friends. They're doing it directly to their partner so they always have this private and sacred space of communication that's just between them it can be quite humorous you know you can say oh my god you're driving me nuts and it can be a funny thing rather than an angry thing it can be really really sacred and it can create a very special sacred space so making time to talk about desires, fears, concerns, worries, insecurities, things you're excited about is really, really important to create that sacred space. You may also want to plan a fun time together, going to do something silly and events that allow you to laugh together. Laughter is such an important part and element of any relationship. You may want to exercise together. You may decide that you want to both, I don't know, become exercise partners and support each other that way. I am certainly not the person to tell you what's right for your relationship or the behaviours that are going to work for you because only you two can know that together. The important thing I want you to take away from this is that once you really understand each other's values and once you have communicated openly and honestly and vulnerably what those values specifically mean to you in terms of support, in terms of behavior, in terms of intention, then it develops mutual understanding. And where we have mutual understanding, there is very little room for conflict. And of course, relationships change, grow and mature over time, and they go through different phases. Use this technique at any point that you feel you would like a closer connection or a better mutual understanding. And I wish all of you growthful, happy and long relationships. Thanks for watching.